Okay, so we are live once again on Twitch. Yeehaw. What are we gonna what are we gonna talk about? Well, we'll talk about this painting probably. I was thinking maybe I'll make some commentary on the news. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a news channel here that most people in English wouldn't listen to. And then I'll comment on that news channel instead of commenting on the news that you normally hear. You see here. Where is it? Tivelt. You have to do that. Where is my data? There's supposed to be a data thing here. Stats. There's that's some that's the wrong kind of stats. <clears throat> I want the data. Data is everything. Twitch stats. That whole lot. <clears throat> well, something's happening. Yeah, so I got a comment here. Hold on. Let me let me get Phil to let me let me get this guy to come over to the Twitch stream. go now we're trying to get him to move to the chat stream we'll see if that works <clears throat> yeah so i'm going to work on this painting and um i'm going to talk a little bit about the news so let me see let me, let me get back here i already got this on here top news um headline here Assange's erlit laut verlobter im Gefängnis schlagen fall. So Julian Assange has had a um, a stroke, and it says here that it's probably due to the stress from the situation with his criminal case or court case, and uh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That's got to be stressful. And frankly, my editorial here would be is just that what's going on is just wrong. Running running a news site does not make you an international criminal. And if th this is the same thing they tried to do when the uh, Pentagon Papers came out years ago, kid, mother stuff. So yeah, anyways, that's that's Julian Assange. Dear and gross Britannian in half tier to winking leaks grundor Julian Assad hat nach Aufgaben seiner Verlobten Stella Morris in Gefangenis einen Lichten Leichten Schlaganfall erlitten. Der Vorfall habe ich sich am 27. Oktober ereignet, dem Tag an dem die USA gegen, in, gegen ein in Großbritannien gerichtlich verfugtes Auslieferungsverbot in Berufung gegangen waren. So, this apparently happened on the day that he got the news that he was going to be deported to the United States. I think that would probably shock anybody. What else here? What else is news? Wie Achim Reichel auf Platz 1 der chinesischen Charts kam. Vor 30 Jahren sein Achim Reichel ein Shanti über Reise nach Singapur und Zanzibar. Nun läuft das Siemens Lied des Hamburger Rockers plötzlich in China rauf und runter. Wie konnte das passieren? <coughs> well, 
this dude wrote some kind of sea shanty, and now it's one of the most popular songs in China, and he's from Hamburg. And they want to know, how could this happen? And the answer is probably the Internet. And, well, you know, TikTok, YouTube, a lot of other stuff, Twitch. Welcome to the modern world. Remember, you're only 85 milliseconds from everybody on the planet. Ah, commentary here. They're torturing the guy to death for publishing factual information. He deserves better. I certainly agree with that. I really do. I think the whole thing is, is abominable. But, you know, I'm not in control of the situation. I have very little input into this. But I do think it's abominable. And I don't think it's making anybody better off. Prosecuting people for revealing that they're basically being watched 24-7 by the NSA on everything they do, every smartphone device they use, every tablet computer. I think that's a public service as opposed to a, a, a punishable crime. Totalitarianism always begins with good intentions. No question about it. I don't even know what to say about it. It's really annoying. Boy, I'm glad I'm not involved in it. Now, let's talk about what I'm doing right here. I have discovered that adding a little contrast in these white sections so it looks like there's bricks really makes these paintings pop. So I'm going to get up to that. Yeah, I don't really care about this guy, Achim Reichel. Apparently, he's Mr. Cool, dude. Okay. That's supposed to be top news. Joshua Kimmich will this nun talk infant lesson. Some guy named Joshua Kimmich is a uh, football player here. And apparently, it would look like from the headline that he was against being vaccinated. And now he's going to get vaccinated. Which is probably a very good thing. We've commented on this before. I am vaccinated. I think everybody should be vaccinated as long as there's not any good medical reason for them to be vaccinated. If you have Gillian Bear syndrome or something else, and the vaccine's not good for you, okay, I get that. But to just sit there and say, me thug, me do whatever I want. No, that's not cool. Sorry. I don't like it. There's societal needs and there's personal needs. Personal freedom is not infinite. Otherwise, we'll have a disaster. Yeah, see, I like these. These buildings look cool like that. I should probably zoom in on this at some point. I think that really does make these paintings pop a little better. Just put a little few bricks in here. It's kind of like Tiger Strike camouflage. <clears throat> Our snow is melting today. That's a good thing. Let's see, is there any other exciting news here? New Zealander lost this same mile on item tag in Corona Infant. Some lunatic in New Zealand had allowed himself to be vaccinated 10 times against coronavirus in one day. No, I don't get it. Is there any texture on the turret roofs? At the current time, no, but yes, there will be. See, this is just the first layer. Much like painting in oils, I'm going to go back over this and increase the darkness here. This is not a one-pass thing. I'll give you a little example here. 
So for instance, here I'm coming in and I'm making lines that will actually be See, those are the tiles on the roof. That has to be painted in in a dark color. And then, come up like this. See, then you get a whole different effect. But that takes time. We're working on that. We will eventually get there. It's almost no situation where you just put down a wash and leave it. Although an exception to that is probably there are exceptions to that. If you're doing the sky, for example, you'll probably just put down a wash, a thin wash, and you probably won't do a lot over that. It'll just be one wash. <clears throat> and then it's done. Um, these roofs are not finished yet. That, that still needs some work. Um, what are we going to do next? I'll take some of this, and I'm going to start on the door. I want this to be really dark red, and it's not yet. What does that mean? It's just going to be two coats, or three. Got to build stuff up somewhat. That's really, you know, that's, that, that's really the difference between a child's painting and an adult's. That a child puts down one wash of color and nothing over it, and then they're done. And that doesn't give me any contrast. It doesn't give you any light and shade. It doesn't give you any anything to to give it any dimensionality. Now this painting here, this is a this is kind of a cartoonish fantasy painting, and it is supposed to be two dimensional. It's it's not a three dimensional painting. But even though it's not two-dimensional, or even that it's not a portrayal of a three-dimensional scene, it still has lights and darks and contrast, like here in the wood. I came back over that two or three times, so there was a light layer and then a darker layer. So yeah, it builds up over time. Yeah, I like that. The red door. I'm like, do you want to look behind the red door, the green door, or the other door? I don't know what the other door's going to be. Okay. Fire away. Ask more painting questions. I can answer anything. Within reason. Why somebody would allow themselves to be vaccinated 10 times against coronavirus in one day, I don't know. You know, you know what? This news channel is lame. I need to look for a better news channel. That, that is just boring. There is nothing there worth, worth newsing about. Let me see what I got here. Maybe this will work. I don't know. Let's see. Is bleed over from adjacent colors a big problem with this type of paints? That depends on how you paint. I am painting on dry paper here. This is more of like the British watercolorist style or illustrator's style from ages and ages ago. 
This is not how a lot of people do watercolor. I'm using hot pressed paper. This paper has no grain to it. It's really flat. It's the kind of thing that you use for doing biological illustrations. Um, illustrations of, of, I don't know, an anatomy or something. And it's the kind of stuff you use when you want a lot of detail. If you're trying to do a lot of detail, then you might do some color washes first. Let the color washes dry. And you might do that even on the wet paper. I mean, one technique is to wet the paper before you start. And then lay down big swaths of color and it goes everywhere because it diffuses through the paper and the moisture. That's one way of doing things. And another way is like what I'm doing right now. I'm laying in a very light wash of color in the lines and I'm trying to stay in the line. Oh, and by the way, putting drawing these lines in pencil makes it easier to hold that color in one place. The color doesn't want to flow outside of the graphite. So for what I'm doing, no, it's, it's not a really a problem. Um, a little bit of wash floating around in different directions is fine as far as I'm concerned for what I'm doing. I'm not looking for super realism. I'm looking for a kind of a surrealistic fantasy. However, what I do is, is if I put the color down, like, okay, I just put that brown down. And I might come back in and, and highlight that with some dark brown. But if you'll notice like the red that's next to this brown that I'm painting right this second, that's dry. And if you get out a microscope and you look at this closely, yeah, you'll, you'll see a little bit of overflow there. You'll see a little bit of that red sort of floating into the brown. See right there. You can see it right there. I've dragged some red in. Okay. But the, you have to also remember the overall effect. Somebody's not going to be looking at this like they're this close to it. They're, they're not going to be millimeters away from, from the paper. They're going to be standing three or four feet back from this, which gives a whole different view. And in fact, that's one of the big problems that I have is that I often forget, I get so wrapped up in the detail that I forget what's actually going on. And that really on all this painting stuff, one of the key things to do is to step back and see what the overall effect is. Because you might have something you think looks really, really nice in, in you know, two square centimeters of space, and then it just looks weird when you stand back from it. But yeah, all, all really, all painting is a matter of layering. Uh-oh. That flagpole just got a lot whiter. That'll do. So yeah, I mean, it all depends on, on, on what you're doing. Um, Sometimes I use wet on wet when I'm doing like a landscape, a realistic landscape. Then I'll tend to moisten the whole paper and I'll put in some very light fill colors and I'll let them diffuse all over the place. And it doesn't matter if the blue sky diffuses a little bit into the ground or the grass diffuses a little bit someplace else, because that's what's happening with the real light. If you go out and you look at some place, you'll see that happening. You, the, that's why, you know, Part of why water looks the, there's 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 water in the sky and and it looks blue and then the the water in a lake reflects the sky and then the, that looks blue because it's reflecting the sky and if you have another big item there near the lake and you see the reflection you'll see like a white building in the water because it's reflecting you're doing the same thing with watercolor and with with oils to some degree oils are like translucent they're not opaque. Now we're going to put in some of these windows. I have to be real careful here not to smear anything. So 
another big problem. One of the commandments of painting, thou shalt always know what you're resting your hand on. Great, these are great questions. The Oracle of Kloster Lechfeld is on his chair, so fire away. Oh yeah, uh, no, that didn't work. I just want, I don't want the Mercur e-paper, I just want Mercur. Maybe it's, fuck it. Oops, I said a naughty word. No, I can't get to that. Well, let's see. What else might we be able to look at? Um, what about Deutsche Welle? Der Spiegel. DW, Deutsche Welle. Breaking world news. ta -dum! What do I think of this thesis abstract? Crypto capital, the political economy of cryptocurrencies. The technology and capitalism are intertwined in historical and dialectical relationship. One aspect of technological achievement is that it allowed for more efficient and distant trade networks, which ultimately allowed for the exchange of value to go beyond city walls and eventually national borders. Cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology represent a new phase of this historical process. Cryptocurrency systems and their technical details are complex as well as unintuitive. A higher level understanding of these systems assists in deconstructing the particulars, features, and protocols underlying cryptocurrencies obscure and obfuscate an individual's entity's transaction behavior and real life identity. The obfuscation makes these systems difficult to study. In this study, I de-anonymize key actors in two cryptocurrency systems, Bitcoin and Litecoin. Using this de-anonymized network, I study the evolution of the transaction of networks in both systems. Ultimately, I argue that cryptocurrencies, counter to the popular rhetoric employed by their advocates, are not a decentralizing or democratizing force. I show that consolidation is occurring within these systems, infrastructural and organizational context, and that this consolidation is deeply intertwined with changes in the underlying social structure as well as the external and abstract markets surrounding these systems. Well, yeah, okay. Maybe he's right and maybe he's wrong. Um, I'm not a big fan of cryptocurrency. I think it's stupid. A piece of gold has inherent value. You can build electronics out of it. You can make cool jewelry out of it. You can do other things with it. Uh, cryptocurrency has not it, it, it consists of nothing it is a string of digital zeros and ones it has no inherent value whatsoever it only has the value that people put upon it so it is an inherently unstable system of of trade that's why you see Bitcoin ratcheting around. Oh, today it's sixty thousand dollars a coin. Tomorrow it's forty-five thousand dollars a coin. Next week maybe it's a hundred thousand. Maybe the week after that is twenty. I don't know. Neither do you. And it's completely unpredictable. I do not own any Bitcoin, and I do not plan on owning any Bitcoin. I'm investing my money in Japanese woodblock prints and other forms of art. I'm, I'm open to purchasing art. I have some money. I'm open, open to purchasing art. If I like it and the price is right, I think the price is good, I'll buy it. I think as a speculative device, cryptocurrency, yeah, if you, if you know something about how to speculate in the market, 
then you have a chance of making a fair amount of profit on on, on cryptocurrencies. But you have to understand it's speculation. It's not investment. As far as the paper goes, I have no idea. I haven't read it. There's only 168 hours in a week, and I've got too many things to do otherwise. Oh, well here, Deutsche Welle, English is the default language. Schultz set for inaugural visit to Poland. Russia-Ukraine tensions are likely to dominate Sunday's talks between the new German leader and his Polish counterpart. Olaf Schultz is our new chancellor here. He's from the SPD. He's a conservative SPD guy. He's not a liberal. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't think things are going to change a lot. Germany today is a country that believes in stability. Although they're talking about legalizing pot here, which may very well happen in the next few months. And I think that would be good. The police have better things to do with their time than chase around potheads. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of cryptocurrency. I, I certainly wish that I bought Bitcoin when it was $100 a Bitcoin. And if I saw something that I thought had the same potential, I'd buy 100 euros worth of it. I'd let it sit. But right now I don't see, I, I can't tell what has that potential. Does Ethereum have it? Does Litecoin have it? There's, there's 500 different or 1,000 different kinds of cryptocurrency. I suppose one strategy would be to buy $50 in each cryptocurrency and just wait and see what happens. Personally, I expect that, that it's highly likely that at some point that will be outlawed. Governments will outlaw that stuff. The Chinese have already outlawed it. Because it removes their ability to control the economy. And so then, you know, you got a bunch of Bitcoin in a Bitcoin wallet somewhere. And if the secret police get to you, well, you're in trouble. Also, there's only a few places you can spend it. I mean, what good is that? I, I you know, there are there were some places in Hanover. There were some some coffee shops that were accepting it. There were some. Um, Restaurants that had decided to accept it in the alternative part of town there. There were a few other places. But I have to say it was much more of a gimmick than, than it was like any kind of serious currency in my opinion. But, you know, that's me. There were people there who thought it was the coolest thing ever. I knew a bunch of guys there, young guys, who were talking about Bitcoin and how cool it was. Me, I didn't see it. I still don't. I have a sneaking suspicion that Ganavan out there is not the world's biggest fan of cryptocurrencies. And I should confess that Ganavan and I know each other off screen. So, let's see. Schultz is going to Poland. One dead, several missing after buildings collapsed in Sicily. Biden vows to help, bottles help for states hit by devastating tornadoes. That's sad. That really is. That's a sad thing.
Let's see here. You know what? I need some water of a different color. One of the things that I do when I'm painting is that I keep separate things of water for each general color. I'll be right back. Oh, wait a minute. Got it right here. That's right. I don't know if that. Oh, where, where is my right here? Distilled water. Distilled water is good for painting because painting with watercolors because it doesn't have anything in it to change the color of the pigments. So it's an advantage to use distilled water. Ooh. I just had an idea, and now I've lost. Oh, yeah. Make this center door yellow. And maybe, maybe Gamma Van has drifted off to another world. Another planet on the cybernet. War weariness in Russia as tension with Ukraine rises. How can they be tired of the war? America's a country that's been at war for 20 years. Hopefully that will not turn into a war. That would be a very bad thing if it does. Very bad. It'll be bad for Russia. Russia will not win friends and influence people by invading the Ukraine. I think Putin is not thinking this one through. I think the negatives there are probably a lot bigger than the positive. So hopefully it won't happen. I think here in a minute, I'm going to have to lay this painting aside and let this part dry some. This is with this style of painting, dry painting with watercolor. We're using watercolor a little bit more like gouache. At times you have to back off and let stuff dry for a while. Here's I made me a new post. I'm here just doing some audio. Pretty okay, cool. I enjoy having your company. Hopefully someday somebody new will turn into this station. Now, I think in the interest of not messing anything up, we're going to lay that aside. And we're going to pull this one out. And we're going to work on it. That is very much my standard procedure. Is that I work on one a little bit, and then I work on another one. And then I work them all into something. This one... Is missing a few little drawing things that need to happen before we go any further. Man, it is dusty here. What else is news here from Deutsche Welle? Deutsche Welle is the German equivalent of the BBC. Schultz denies COVID shots have divided the country. Well, Schultz, I got news for you. I think to some degree this whole COVID thing has divided every country in the entire world. Having said that, 
my position is clear. I think everybody should get vaccinated. I think if you don't, you're an idiot. If it's just because you don't feel like it, I'm sorry. I just, I don't buy it. I've been vaccinated three times for COVID. God, for that matter, when I was in the U.S. Army, I was vaccinated against everything on the planet. And it didn't matter how I felt about it. You were getting vaxxed or you were going to military prison for refusing a lawful order. I'm not sure how people can live like that. Do booster cells help against Omicron? The truth is, nobody really knows yet. I would assume they have some help. I would not assume that they have a lot of help. Although it is possible that Omicron will be less, will cause less intense sickness than the earlier variants. Normally, viruses get weaker as time goes on, not stronger. Not necessarily weaker, but they're less, less deadly. I don't know. Pandemic trends and recharge. Germany's new defense minister faces difficult tasks. Left-leading Social Democrats' nomination was a surprise, and she may find it a challenge to win over the troops. German Finance Minister announces billions for climate change. New display in Vienna addresses issue of Nazi-era relics. New Caledonia holds third independent vote from France. Palestinians vote in West Bank elections amid growing anger. Daughter of first U.S. astronaut flies into space. Uh, publicity stunt. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. whatever. So, yeah, the news is average. Since it's basically Christmas time, usually the news cycle gets kind of calmer. <laughs> uh, excuse me. You were supposed to say Gesundheit. So yeah, the German news just doesn't look very exciting today, to be quite frankly honest with you. An unusually calm Lubick Christmas market. U.S. firms are, why U.S. firms are reshoring their business? More and more U.S. companies are reshoring their facilities because of supply snarls abroad. Well, that's a smart move. 
It's a stupid idea from day one. Oh, we'll just outsource everything. Yeah, Ooh. That could, That's going to be the greatest thing ever, baby. Woo! There's a guy, Jocko Willink, who does a podcast, ex-Navy SEAL. And he runs several businesses. He's making his own jeans, made in American jeans. And he is also doing boots, like hiker's boots, general work boots. He makes them all in Maine. And he says the difference between outsourcing to China and making it in America is like a 15, maybe 10 or 15% price savings, if that. It, because you got to pay for the transportation cost to bring all that stuff back. You save a little money in the end, but it's true. It, it, it's not a huge amount of money. And I got to tell you, a nation that doesn't build stuff in its own country is stupid. You should build everything you need for survival in your own country. That applies to the United Kingdom as well. They would be far better off if they could feed their own population with their own farmers. Right now, that's impossible. Yeah, see, somebody outside likes my idea there. Yeah, I don't understand that. That's, you need to be relatively self-sufficient as a country. There's nothing wrong with selling the overage to somebody else. That's cool. Um, if you have something like the EU, then okay, you know, you can be, be a little more reliant on other people. But one thing is, is that every country should be energy independent. I think that's a mistake that we're making here. We're not energy independent. And we should build as many nuclear power plants as possible so we become nuclear, we, so that we become energy independent and wind farms and solar farms. There's a huge solar farm three kilometers from where I live here that was once an American army base. There's actually an American army base right here in Kloster Leckfeld. It closed about 12 years ago. They had a brigade of soldiers here and apparently the economy died after they left. So yeah, if you, if you want to do it with solar and wind power and geothermal, I'm okay with that. But generally, from the stuff that I've seen, the only way to actually become energy independent and get off of fossil fuels is to use nuclear power. If you build French-style nuclear reactors, you shouldn't have any problem with them. They're not going to melt down because they're designed for civilian use. Chernobyl and Three Mile Island were basically naval power plants packed into a civilian situation, and those are inherently deadly as hell. Bad idea. So, we're done with a little drawing here. Let's do a little painting. Yeah, energy independence, man. You want to have freedom? You need energy independence. You cannot rely on other countries to make you, to make your energy and consider yourself a free country. That's crazy talk. It really is. Totally crazy. So we've talked a little bit about the lame news. Let's see, what else is in here? Went down, I think I told you guys this on the last stream, which I may or may not actually publish because the sound quality was bad. But Friday night I was down in Augsburg at Neruda Cafe, my favorite place to hang out in Augsburg. And there were a bunch of English speakers there, which is shocking, because it's rare that anybody comes in there as a group that speaks English. It's just not very common. And so I went over and I heard this voice and it, rawr, 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 rawr. oh, that must be an American, just the way they say they're ours. I went over and introduced myself, nice young lady. Been here for four and a half years studying some kind of horn, music school. Finished her master's degree here, now getting ready to return to the United States next week. 
It was interesting because she said, oh yeah, I speak German pretty well, but these people are really hard to integrate with, blah, blah, blah. And here I am, I'm sitting over on the other side of the cafe in the like German Stammtisch section with all my buddies. Not all of whom are German. A lot of them are from Afghanistan, Turkey, places like that, because it's a, the bar is run by a Turkish guy, famous Turkish artist. And, um, I don't know. I was just, I was like, yeah, you know, well, if, if you don't come over and speak German and hang out with these people and get to know them, you're right. You'll, you'll never get to know any Germans here. I don't know, man. That's just, that's weird to me. I still don't understand that. Wait a minute. New news. There was a message held for bullying. I have no idea what this idiot robot is talking about. It's difficult to trust our society and government to properly operate and dispose of waste from nuclear reactors. Your government, maybe. I trust the Germans and the French just fine. Yeah, I have a problem with Boris Johnson doing that. That's the, or, or Donald Trump. That That's true. The thing is, is that the reactors that they make in France are fundamentally different. They run on 20% enriched fuel instead of 80%. They're like, they're way different than the reactors that they build in, um, in the United States or the General Electric reactors. They're not the same thing. Um, they're fundamentally different technology. And they were designed from the ground up with the idea that, that there, it's potentially very dangerous, which it is. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, of course, if you have a major oil spill, that's potentially dangerous. Um, you know, I can go on about some other stuff like that, but it's all potentially dangerous. But yeah, it, I mean, it would mean like tearing down all the reactors that you have, all the American reactors, and therefore most of the British reactors and so forth. They were all based on American naval technology. And that naval technology stuff, <clears throat> that naval technology stuff was inherently dangerous because it was designed to produce the maximum amount of power in the minimum amount of space a thousand feet underwater. And if it blows up, well, you kill the crew. Okay, that's the end of that. And the submarine disappears. Welcome to Davy Jones' locker. But because you're in water, which is an inherently a, 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 a radiation dampener, it's not going to destroy the entire world if, if, if a reactor overheats on a submarine and the submarine goes down and boom, that's the end of that. But yeah, if you do it at Three Mile Island or Chernobyl or, you know, the reactors here in Bavaria or something, it's a big problem. The French reactors are designed to run on 20% enriched fuel. It's a completely different thing. The technology is not the same at all. So yeah, Google how the French build reactors. Their reactors are not the same, man. They're, they're, they're a very different thing. It, it's like these idiots in Texas saying that, that that's solar power doesn't work in cold temperatures. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The International Space Station runs on solar power. It is 400 and some degrees below zero up there because it's basically half a degree above absolute zero. There is no warmth in space. It's cold. Also, there's no sound. So yes, no one can hear you scream in space. And the ISIS has run fine for 20 years on solar power. Soyuz. Soyuz has little solar wings. They have these little solar panel wings that fold out, and those spaceships operate on solar power in space. Why? Because it's cheap. And it works. There's a great story. You know, the, the Americans were building stuff for NASA, and they wanted to they wanted a pen work in space, ballpoint pen, you know, ballpoint pen, 
One of these. A ballpoint pen. No, that's not a ballpoint. That's ballpoint pen. Ta-da! And they spent a million, I think it was actually three million dollars to build a ballpoint pen. It was pressurized with nitrogen gas that would work in space. And I had one once. They sold them in America for sixty dollars a piece as like a novelty item. You know what the Russians did? The Russians said, hey Yorgi, I have a good idea. We not spend three million dollars or sixty million rubles on pen. Instead, we take pencil to space. And so that's what they did. They they took a pencil instead of a pen. And boom, problem solved. You know? You gotta think about that. Why why would you do that? And you could have just had a felt tip marker. That probably would have worked. Although I don't know. Will a felt tip marker work in space? Somebody should Google that. I do not know. The investment was worth it in a way in the pressurized pen because they don't shed graphite. Dude, that's true, but you're in space. A few, a few, <laughs> a few chips of graphite in space probably aren't going to do a lot to alter the universe. Yeah, I know, they're inside of the spaceship, but nevertheless. Yeah. It's pretty funny if you think about it. weird things out there so yeah I'm I'm, I'm basically a, a, a supporter of nuclear energy if it's done right are you gonna do it wrong are you gonna put Boris Johnson in charge of it or Donald Trump then uh no 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 I don't want to be part of that thanks I'll, I'll pass on Phil tips also don't work in a vacuum well there you have it our local resident physicist has has made it clear they don't work in a vacuum. What would happen if I painted watercolor in space? Maybe that wouldn't work either. Damn, I guess I'm stuck on the planet. I don't know. Maybe it would be a whole new thing. Maybe a whole new kind of painting. I would think that when the brush touches the paper or a canvas and you drag it along, the paint would come off. Wouldn't it? I don't know. You couldn't paint very easily on the moon's surface because of lack of atmosphere causing all your bio paint chemicals to disappear. What if I'm in the spaceship? I don't plan on sitting outside. I'm not a plain air painter or plain vacuum painter. What if I'm sitting in the lunar module doing a watercolor? There are no volatile chemicals in watercolor. That's one of the reasons why I paint in watercolor. I do have, I, I, yeah, no drips. No drips might be cool. That might be a good thing. I make mistakes with drips all the time. Yeah, I like the way this one's shaping up. This is coming along kind of cool here. I think that needs to dry for a few seconds. Let's go back and get this.
You wouldn't need an easel. You mean you wouldn't need a palette. The easel is the thing that holds the painting. The palette is where you put the colors. This thing over here, this is this is a palette of color. Palette. C'est français, monsieur. C'est un français, non? Oui. You know, a while back I was watching this guy who was Japanese and about half the painting words about half the painting words colors and stuff they're, they're, they're the same in Japanese and English I could uh, basically understand what he was saying after watching it long enough I didn't really get an active vocabulary or anything but I could understand what he was talking about without reading the subtitles all I had to do was watch, watch the film or the video. He's a really cool, he's got a great stream, man. He's on YouTube. I don't know if he's still doing it. He's quite old. He's in his 70s. And he's talked a couple of times about giving it up. But his watercolor was Subiachi, I think it is, or Subiaki. He's got a great stream. stream. It's fun. It really is. It's a good thing. He does a more atmospheric watercolor kind of thing, and there's a lot more wet on wet in his paintings. But they're still pretty pretty realistic as well. Yeah, you should go look at him. He's a cool dude. Ganavan, what else should we discuss today? I'm running out of stuff to talk about. I'm actually having a very naughty thought. I'm thinking about going over and buying a bottle of Pinot Noir. Coming back, uncorking the bottle and doing some more painting. Hmm, no comments from the comment gallery. Yeah, I wish there was more news to talk about. Something interesting. No, there's not much interesting happening. There's a lot of misery happening. Really in misery. I kind of gave up misery when I got out of the army. Yeah, it's amazing how this computer grinds away when I'm doing this live. Just listening to that, that fan just fly like there's no tomorrow, baby.
One thing is that if you are painting and have the balls of water and paint floating in the zero-g next to you and the RCS thrusters fire or something, everything goes splat. Well, this is true. I think I'm probably going to be painting on Mars. Hopefully not in Elon Musk's slave colony. But maybe it will be there. I think I would only consider painting in the spaceship after we reach whatever velocity we're going to reach, and then we're in the six to seven month period of we have nothing to do until we arrive. So yeah, this one's going to have to dry for a while. I need to come down and put some blue back in here. I like the way this is turning out though. This is looking pretty cool. Oh, I had an itchy back. That's what long brushes are designed for. It's scratching. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about painting in space. That's somewhat unlikely. Really. Yeah. All right, now we got these two things drying. It looks kind of Christmassy for some reason. Question is, what do we do next? I have a boatload of drawing that needs to be worked on. I do have another big pain over here that needs work. Mm. Ah. Oh, I have another CBC stain here that I need to start on. Let me finish drawing that though. Make sure it's left out of the way. This is kind of interesting. Joe and Delta. I started working on these last spring. I was looking for something different to do. So I got some colored markers. 
I started doing these weird abstracty things. It looks really good on camera. Actually, it looks to me, it looks better on camera than it does in real life. Oh, that's weird. Anyways, yeah, that's that's a really bright, colorful thing. It's supposed to be completely surrealistic and abstract. I, I don't know what else to tell you about it. It is what it is. Spent today rearranging here and trying to get stuff more organized before I started drawing. Stuff was just buried here. Buried, I tell you. Deeply buried. Well, let's see. There's this Sea Beasties painting. I haven't done any Sea Beasties stuff for quite some time. This is not really finished yet. Man, I got an itchy back. There's something. I need to get fabric softener or something. Sure. Well, I was once told fabric softener makes even more itchy. I, I don't know. Oh, uh, let's see. This is... This is something I've been working on. I started trying to redo CBC stuff here not long ago. Yeah. Just put this away for now. I'm not using it for anything. That's weird. Why is that flickering? have this set for 50 hertz it's sort of get it anybody know anything about how to remove that flicker no mm. Would it help if I stopped the stream and started over again? If I turn off all the lights? Yeah, I tried that. That light does it. It's this light. This naughty, naughty, naughty light here. That sucks because I really like that light. That's helpful. It wasn't really the light that I wanted anyways. These lights are much better. This light is a problem. Okay. That one's all right. Okay, um, what I need now is some good old-fashioned, wait a minute, look, here, I have good old-fashioned pencil. Somewhere I should have an F. F is good. F is good. Maybe a plain HB is good. And they appear to be sharp. That's good. So I do have an electric sharpener. So this is going to be a small Sea Beasties painting. I think we'll finish working on the drawing here. I'm just going to put in some kind of a weird tower right here. Power tower, since we're discussing power today. Kind of like a Tesla tower.
Creativity. Creativity is a great thing. I recommend it. Yeah, this, this light that does that weird stuff, it's a different kind of light than these other lights. These other lights are normal LED lights. That light, I don't know, it's weird. It behaves weird. Not behave properly. Again, what we're doing here, this this is not based on, on light, light, light normal perspective or something these these are these are weird surrealistic paintings and drawings and so there is some perspective in this but at the same time a lot of it is two-dimensional I think I'll draw for 20 more minutes, get this thing set up as much as possible. And then I'll consider this naughty plan to get a bottle of wine. This is going to have a bunch of, I don't know what, it's going to get color in here that's like silver and gold. I have some silver and gold watercolor in here. Some schminka. I bought it last summer, I believe. No, it wasn't last summer. It was a while before that. One thing that's worth talking about, maybe, even with this super abstract stuff, surrealism, you still got to have a good drawing before you start painting. Or it's just not going to come out the way you think it is. And even then it's not going to come out. The drawing is everything. Adding color is just basically filling in. It's like a it's like a coloring book. It is the same with oil painting. You got to start with a good drawing and a good underpainting, and then filling in the color is like a coloring book. I'm going to be doing a bunch of trimps, twitch screaming when I go on vacation in ten days, and I've already got it set up. So that I can turn around my, my camera, I can put it over and focus on the oil painting. Ah, but I'm broadcasting at 60 frames a minute. <clears throat> this is this camera here that you're using to look down on this. That's that's an expensive camera. That cost me 120 euros, man. That's a, that's a full HD, 60 frame per minute camera. And actually, I was originally planning on using my DSLR as the camera and putting it up there. And the guy at Saturn here in Augsburg was like, well, you can do that. You'll need to get this camera capture card, and we don't really sell good ones of those. We have one over there, but it's really not got a good reputation. But this thing I know will broadcast 
high definition video quite well. And he was right. In Germany, you should listen to your technical advisor most of the time. They usually know what they're talking about. <clears throat> yep, 60 foot per sec feet, frames per second versus 50 hertz. Well, I don't like that little lamp anyway, so I have to replace it. I think the only thing that we really have left here in Germany our LED lights. I think you can still buy real incandescent bulbs. Bulbs. Like at some art stores and stuff. Because the light is supposedly better for drawing and painting. But you know what? I don't care anymore. Also, those incandescent bulbs cost a huge amount of money to operate here due to the cost of electricity. I need to come up with some new details for these things. There needs to be some new stuff here in the background. I need to work on that. I like this painting. This looks like it's going to turn out pretty cool. You know what? This needs to have something inside of it. Kind of wild electrical power happening. That's what this thing needs. It needs to look wild. Let's put something weird on the horizon. Super pyramid. -y. Put a ladder up on the side of it or something. It's weird. Um. I 
I just got an endless stream of all kinds of stuff. But I can never find what I really need. Ah. The compass. Also known as the circle drawer thing. See? Circle drawer thing. You need a circle drawer thing. Whoopsie daisy. Careful with that axe, Eugene. All right, this is starting to look a little more something like it. I'm looking for a whole new series of something. I haven't figured out what it's going to be yet. A completely new and different surrealistic series of creatures. Something other than what I'm doing now. This is supposed to be on an ocean on Titan, which is a moon around Saturn. Hope I've got that right. So yeah, I'm looking for stimulating ideas. What can I do that will be like an offshoot of this whole sea beasties thing? Maybe creatures on another planet somewhere. There's actually a storyline that goes with this. There's a whole culture and storyline with sea beasties. We've almost got this to the point where we can begin. I don't think we have to put those in. We know what we're going to need. Yeah. In fact, we're there. We're ready to begin on this thing. Almost. There's going to be some weird things down in here. I haven't decided what goes into these yet. And there needs to be something like here. And then you know what? Where 
there's that circle making thingy. I'm not quite sure what's going to go into this thing. That's always a problem. If I don't know what's going to go in there, that's a problem. It's 14.25. I've been here for 85 minutes. We're going to take a 10 or 15 minute break, and then I'll be back on the broadcast. So, Ganavan, stick around. I'll be back online here shortly. I need a short break. Take care. See you guys soon. Blah, blah, blah.